Welcome everyone to Lingua Latina Tutorials with Mr. K. We are in Chapter 10. Uh, this is Pensum D. This video is meant to accompany the Latina Disco or the Lingua Latina College Companion Texts, both available from Focus Bookstore. Let's go through the text together as I point out a few features. Let's start by looking at line 1. We have Equus et asinus leo et lupus canis et ovus bestiae sunt. Uh, a horse and a donkey, a lion and a wolf, a dog and a sheep are animals, are, are beasts. So we have here, notice uh, leo. Leo is a third declension noun, and we see in the margin that the nominative is leo, but the genitive, the second form here, is Leonis, Leo Leonis, and that it is masculine. In the margin notes from now on, you're going to see for third declension nouns that the, uh, the genitive is listed, and it needs to be memorized because the endings for the third declension are added to the genitive. The stem is uh, found from the genitive, so the stem of Leo is Leon and then you add your endings to Leon. And notice that we have Leon here, Leones, and Leonum for the genitive plural. So these need to be memorized uh, when you see a new third declension noun. And also uh, the genders, uh, as we covered in the last chapter, for the third declension, uh, nouns that end in R tend to be masculine in the third declension. Nouns that end in S, O, or X tend to be feminine. And nouns that end in L, A, N, C, E, T, any of those letters, or us in ris in the genitive, tend to be neuter. That's not a, uh, does not always work, but it's a general rule that's helpful. Here, Leo, we see, <laughs> breaks the rule. Uh, so we will have um, exceptions, but it's nice to have. A beginning, a starting point, so we can just memorize the exceptions. Okay, so let's look now. Uh, the next feature I want to point out is in line 15. Let me scroll down to line 15, and we see um, Piscis, uh, Piscis qui natat cauda moet, cum avis volat alae moentur. Here we have when a, a bird flies the wings are moved, a la moventur. So cum here is a conjunction, and we call it a temporal conjunction. There are different kinds of conjunctions, and um, it's called temporal here because it is telling us when something is occurring. And we'll see other kinds of uh, cum as a conjunction. There are different names for other cum conjunctions. Here, just know now that this is the temporal one, the one that means when in time when in time the bird flies and uh, the wings are moved. The next feature is in line 21. Let's go to line 21 with me. And we have canis volare non potest. Uh, a dog is not able to fly. Uh, this new verb here, potest, is just a combination of pot, the, the stem pot, P-O-T, which means power or strength, uh, one noun that comes from this potestas, and um, est, which is is. So the combination of um, power and is, uh, the, has, we, we translate it as is able or has the power to. Here the dog does not have the power to fly, and we just translate this, the dog is not able to fly. We have also in this same sentence, volare, which is called an infinitive in Latin. Infinitives are kinds of verbs. Uh, they do not have person and number, meaning that we would not say I to fly, you to fly, he, she, it to fly, we to fly. You wouldn't, there's no number associated with it. It's translated as to, T-O, uh, plus the verb form. So here, in this case, to fly. And um, in, in this sentence, it's a complementary infinitive because when we say is not able, we expect 
the English verb to do something, to, is not able to fly, is not able to walk, etc. So here we have volare. And um, these infinitives will uh, are important to memorize for every verb, and, and Orberg will start to list them in the margin notes, because if you take off the re, the re, you end up with wola, which is your present stem, and your present endings and imperfect endings and future endings will be added to that stem. So when you learn your verbs, this is your basic form, and usually the first form in the list that Orberg will give you for each new verb. So now let's move on to line 24, and in this line we have another kind of conjunction. We have homines ambulara posunt, quod pedes habent, nequabulara posunt, quod alles, alas non habent. So people are able to walk because they have feet, and they're not able to fly because they don't have wings. So here we have quod, two, quod twice. Both of these are, um, are conjunctions, but we call them causal conjunctions because they're telling us the cause or the reason. So because, because they have. So uh, compare that to the cum clause, which was a time conjunction. Okay, let's look now at line 38. And uh, let's get further down. It's right here where we have uh, the we have more infinitives. Uh, actually, it's a, yeah, line thirty-eight here. Homines deus neque videra neque audira posunt dei ab minibus neque videri neque audiri posunt. So we have people are not able are neither able to see nor to hear the gods, and then we have the gods are able to be seen, are neither able to be seen nor to be heard by people. So uh, we have two different kinds of infinitives right above the, uh, one above the other, widera, wideri, audira, audiri, and notice the difference. Uh, widera, these are both infinitives, but one is active, to see, widera, and one is passive, wideri, to be seen. And then we have audira to hear and audiri to be heard. So while infinitives do not have person and number, they do have voice. So they can be active or passive as we see here. Okay, the next feature I want to point out is in line 41. We have piscis in aqua fluminis natant. And notice here we have another third declension noun, flumen. And the genitive is fluminous. So, as I said before with Leo, you need to memorize the genitive of the noun in the third declension, nouns in the third declension, and um, the genit and the gender. So the uh, gender of flumen is neuter, and it does follow the rule because it ends in an n. It's one of the l a n c e t ending nouns, which is neuter. So uh, the next feature I'd like to point out is in line 44. And we have the word um, on the next page. But if homines multos pisces capiunt, nemo pisces fluminum et marium numerare potest. So nobody is able to count the number of, uh, to, nobody is able to number the fish of the rib of the rivers and the seas, or the fish in the rivers and the seas. So here we have nemo, which is just a combination we see in the margin of ne plus homo. So no person, no man, so is the same as nullus homo, no person. So and we would just translate as nobody. The next feature is in line fifty eight. And notice here we have uh, nekese est spirare nekese est homini. So it is necessary for a person to breathe. And the two features here I want to point out are uh, nekese est is what we call an impersonal verb. And impersonal l literally means without person. So there's no first, second, third person 
uh, singular plural for this, it it doesn't have an like I am necessary. You can't have nekese sum. So we call it impersonal because you add it in front of the translation. It is necessary. So you can't have like in front of an nekese est homo. A person is necessary because it's impersonal. So just know when you translate a verb with it in front of it, and there's no specific person mentioned, that it is what we call an impersonal verb. And then the other feature in the sentence is we have homini in the dative case from homo hominis. So um, two for a person, here two or for a person. This is called the dative of interest. It's that specific name with uh, with respect to or in because of um, the interests involved, because of the um, the need to breathe. Uh, we call this the dative of interest. Okay, now in line fifty nine we have um, another feature, which is the infinite some a uh, couple of irregular infinitives. We have esa quoque homini nekese est. It's also necessary for a person esa to eat. You see, it comes from edera uh, or edo to eat. Um, esa is the old infinitives infinitive, and uh, we'll notice in another sentence that we have esa, which means to be. And um, so you should distinguish between those two forms and uh, memorize them. In lines 75 and 76, we have Julia Pilam tenet et cum pueris pila ludera vult, neque ii cum puella ludera volunt. So Julia has a ball and she wants to play with the ball with her, with the boys. And they they uh, do not want neque volunt to play with the girl. So here we have other examples of complementary infinitives like we saw with potest and here it's uh, with the verb wult to or from uh, wult she wants wants ludora to play and then we have um, volunt they want or neque wolno, they don't want ludera to play. So the ludera here, are, we see is, is the infinitive that goes with wolt. When you see wolt and wolunt, you expect to have an infinitive with them, and they, it, the infinitive complements or goes with that verb. That you also see that with uh, audet, dare. He dares, you expect to, dares to do what? Or they dare, audent, to do what? Next feature is in line 80. And here we have Pueri Puellam Canara Audiunt. The boys hear the girl uh, singing, or hear that the girl is singing. When you, um, this is a new construction where we see after verbs of perceiving and feeling, so perceiving like hearing, the boys hear that the girl is singing, you see that the subject becomes accusative. Instead of Puella nominative, you get Puellam accusative. And you get conera infinitive with it as your main verb. This is very common in Latin. We'll get, go into more detail on this later. But right now, just realize that when you have a, a, a verb of perceiving and feeling, that after that feeling or perceiving, like audium, they hear, and you have a verb in English, the word that, you get um, this construction, accusative and infinitive. And here in this situation, you don't translate Conra as to sing. You just translate it as the regular verb form, sings. They hear that the girl sings. Okay, now let's look at line 81. And you see, Wokem, Audi, Julia, Wokem, Pulkanam, Havet. Listen, Julia has a beautiful voice. Here in the margin, we see that, that Wokem comes from Wokes, the nominative, and Wokes, the genitive. Another third declension noun that needs to be memorized. And this one again does follow the rule of uh, genders, so S-O-X nouns, this one ends in X, tend to be feminine in the third declension. And uh, this is the accusative form. So uh, the next feature is in line 109. And we have uh, quis spirat mortus esse non potest. 
So this is the, the other infinitive that ends in se. Uh, Ase, which means to eat, and here we have esse, which means to be. So the person who, qui, the person who breathes isn't able to be dead. And so here we have um, esse, meaning to be from est, or what come, the verbs that come from it. Um, this is the sum verb, sum esse, to be, is, and they are. And the last feature in the text I have to point out in this chapter is in line 112. And you see here <coughs> where we have magna voce. Marcus perteritus ad vilam curet et magna voce clamat. Age veni pater. So Marcus, terrified, runs to the house and shouts with a loud voice. Magna voce. Here we have uh, an ablative, uh, ablative case, voce, magna voce, together with a loud voice. As I said before, if you don't have a preposition with your ablative, it gets a special name. And so this ablative gets a special name, and it's called the ablative of manner, the manner in which something is done. With a loud voice answers the question, quomodo, how? And so we have, a, and the name that you should learn with this is ablative of manner. And that is all I have for you for this chapter.